Hello and welcome to Between Two Wheels, the show that takes you behind the velvet rope and shows you everything that's going on in the world of endurance. My name is Ed Lee and we have a packed show for you today. First up, let's meet some of our guests. We've got three riders joining us today. Uh, the first of which is Niccolo Canepa from the Yacht number no. 7 bike. Uh, he's the first Italian ever to win an endurance world title. And when you see him ride, it's clear that he not only has the speed and the consistency, but of course, because he's Italian, he's also got the style. Uh, Niccolo, welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm good. Hi, hi everybody. Thank you very much for the presentation. <laughs> Absolute <laughs> pleasure. Uh, you've got, uh, you had a little bit of a crash last week, but we'll be talking about that later on. Uh, that's one to tease. Uh, the next guest is formerly Niccolo's teammate at GMT 94 when he won the world championship uh, back in 2017. Uh, it's Mike DiMeglio. Uh, he got headhunted by Fujisan at TSR and he spent three seasons riding in EWC. And when you look at Mike's overall results, he's got a world championship and two second places in three seasons. That is an impressive record, Mike. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. To everybody. Happy to be here. And uh, yeah, let's talk. Let's start. Uh, now, I owe you a big thank you as well because you're actually on holiday, aren't you? Yeah, I am in holiday. Thank you to my wife. He's starting to run uh, with a voice like this. I am relaxed like uh, 20 minutes. <laughs> okay, pulling you away from the camping holiday. Uh, thank yeah, you for joining yeah. us, Mike. We'll uh, we'll thank see you me. a little bit later on. And then finally, we've got one of the legends of EWC and Moto2 and Moto3. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Moto Arns Roberto Rolfo, aka Robert. Hello, hello. Belated congratulations, uh, Robbie. You turned 40 during lockdown. And I've got to say, you've got one of the most impressive CVs in the paddock. So you've obviously spent those four decades very, very productively. Oh, thank you. Thank you for this, uh, for sure. I'm, uh, I'm still training a lot and uh, I'm very happy to, to ride in the Endurance World Championship because uh, I feel very, very good with all the, all the people and everybody. And uh, I feel uh, after the uh, lockdown and everything, when I went back to to my era one uh, Yamaka, the feeling was fantastic, and uh, we had a very good uh, session in Le Mans. Also, then uh, I'm waiting for the race because I need to be back, like everybody. I think. <laughs> well, what, what's incredible for me is that currently you're racing in the Superstock World Cup on EWC, and yet you won the Boldor races and the Sepang races, and you're the reigning world champions. You're you're the foundation of a team that just cannot be beaten at the moment. I must uh, say. Thanks to the team because uh, we did very good uh, races last year and uh, also for this season because uh, the team is working very, very good. They are fast in the, in the pit stop and uh, all the people are working in the team uh, is from uh, many here now working. Then they, they adapt a lot also to the, to the bike, to the work we have to do. And uh, I think the, the big difference we, we did during the Sepang race and the Boldor also for, uh, for this new season was because uh, we were uh, very, very fast, uh, not only in the track, but uh, during the pit stop. Then uh, the team made the, the best of the job for sure. And also all my teammates, because they were, we are very uh, close, like riding style and uh, lap time. Then this is very important in the Endurance World Championship. OK, well, we'll be talking about this a little bit later on, but thank you very much, Roberto. Uh, very insightful there. Right now, though, we'll be joining Roberto, Mike DiMeglio and Niccolo Canepa later in the show. Gentlemen, thank you for the introductions and uh, I'll see you very shortly. Right now, though, it is time for the news. Uh, what's been going on? First and foremost, we have a confirmed entry list for the Le Mans 24 hours, and it looks very impressive. It's the 43rd year of the 24 hours on motorbikes at the Bugatti circuit, and very fittingly, we have 43 entries. Now, traditionally, the number of teams entering in on the Bugatti circuit would be in the high 60s, low 70s. It's one of the most popular endurance races in the world. 
but due to the COVID pandemic, those numbers have had to be reduced just to make sure that the paddock is absolutely safe. Uh, but all of the big teams are in there. Uh, we've got so much action-packed racing lining up. First of all, you've got the Suzuki Endurance Racing Team, for whom this is very much a home race. They've got Xavier Simeon, Greg Black, and Etienne Masson uh, all riding together for the first time. In second place in the championship, chasing down to it, we've got BMW Motorrad, a very, very strong team for them, backed up with Kenny Foray, Ilka, uh, Ilya Mikulczyk, and Marcus Reiterboger. Uh, one of the surprise elements, Volchik Racing, who made a splash at the ball door, have reinforced their lineup with the yacht departing rider, Brock Parks, in the saddle of the Yamaha 77. He's just added a seven to his bike. Uh, but he's going to be alongside Gino Rea and Axel Moran. And I think they are going to be one of the most important teams to watch. Uh, Yacht have climbed back up to fourth place in the standings. And instead of uh, Brock Parks, they're bringing in Carol Haneke alongside Marvin Fritz and, of course, Nico, Nicolo Canepa, who's joining us. Um, the two big shocks at the moment, I think, in terms of factory teams are definitely Webbike SRC, uh, in eighth position and then TSR the 2017 and 2018 champions currently down in 12th position so it's going to be a bit of work for them to do but we've got two 24-hour races coming up in quick succession in this rescheduled season which means there are still a lot of points up for grabs for the teams that can settle down quickly uh okay that's it for the news, I think. Uh, we've got, actually, no, we've got a little bit more. We can go and take a little look at Michelin, uh, the tyres that have come in in place of Pirelli. So we've got Michelin's return. Uh, they're coming in with the Ducati bike, number six, and they're going to be a part of, critically, the uh, web bike SRC Kawasaki factory racing team. You put a new tyre on an old bike that's been designed for Pirelli's in the middle of the season, and it's going to be a very, very big ask to get that bike going quickly. But there was a Le Mans test behind closed doors, and Kawasaki had big smiles on their faces in the box, was the word on the street. So allegedly, Gilles Staffler's worries about getting that uh, chassis set up for the tyre appear to have been unfounded. They might have done some good work. Now, seamlessly, we're going to move to SRC Kawasaki's first test on the Michelin tyres in Le Mans. Let's see how they got on. We have decided to restart with the same team, the same riders, but uh, during the COVID-19, we have a lot, a lot of problems with uh, Pirelli because uh, Pirelli said uh, we stop investment in the AWC and for me uh, this decision was a disaster. After uh, 14 years with Pirelli, our choice is uh, Michelin. We tried to do the best with uh, new tires. Of course, to change the, the tires, the manufacturer during the season is not easy uh, because we have to, to adapt the bike again. But uh, we are here to, in Le Mans to, to test for the first time and uh, we have good impressions, so we hope that uh, it's going to be a gain uh, for us. I hope to win uh, another time uh, this year with, uh, with Michelin. Uh, for me, it, was, uh, it will be a great uh, victory for the first time with uh, Michelin. Uh, we work a lot, a lot, and I hope to, I hope to be ready for the start of the race. I think, yes, we, we're going to have uh, enough time uh, to be ready, uh, all the team to prepare the bike for the 24 hour. Uh, we have a good impression for the moment of the tyre. We all know Michelin that uh, when they want, they win. So we, uh, we are ready to, to put the, the Kawasaki Michelin on, on top. Michelin Kawasaki, for me, it's a good uh, Good solution, yeah. I will be the only one. 
on the top team with Michelin. And for me, it's the solution to win. Very, very good insight there. Certainly Gilles Staffler, the team manager, seemed very confident. And Jeremy Guarnoni as well. But the real test will be on the 26th of August when we head to Le Mans for the first of the practices to see how the SRC Kawasaki bike is riding now on those Michelin tyres. Certainly the lap times didn't lie in the test. So if that's to be believed... I think they could be pretty quick, certainly in contention. They got a 13th in Boldor and a 6th in Sepang, so they need a big result in Le Mans. Right then, now it's time to get back in with the riders. Okay, so we'll bring everyone back in. We've got Niccolo Canepa, Mike Di Meglio, and Roberto Rolfo. Gentlemen, uh, I trust you're well. We're going to go now. I mean... I want to go and have a look and see what your social media looked like during lockdown so that we can see what you've been up to. Uh, and I think, Nicola, we should probably start with you. And most recently, you, you were in Moto E. You took a little bit of a fall, didn't you? Yeah, j just a small one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, something happened. I, I, I was pushing at the limit because I, I saw that I could make the, the first row or the pole position, and, uh, but the two corners to the end, uh, I had a big one. So unfortunately, it didn't add uh, as planned. But uh, anyway, I had the chance to, to make another good race the following week. And what I like about this one, we've got the picture of the crash there, but uh, what you can also see right next, if you follow where your foot is pointing, there's Greg Black's comment there. He seemed really impressed with this. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you greg it's always nice to, to see your comment <laughs> mike you're racing in moto e too aren't you what, what are the bikes like how do they compare to the ewc bikes uh, very different the big big difference is uh, the lap we did on it we need to be ready we wait a lot on the day and uh, we make uh, like uh, six laps and it's finished uh the race is very short and uh you need to be very concentrated to be ready when you go on the bike. In other words, you have time to ride, 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 to keep your rhythm, more relaxed. But there, here, it's not possible like this. Uh, one of the things that's impressed me most about your lockdown, Mike, was the way you, you seamlessly went from professional motorbike rider to, uh, first, I think you were testing out a new choice, career choice as a teacher. Yeah, also I teach with uh, some... Uh, people that uh, are ready, uh, training in track, also with uh, children. I, I like this to share my passion, to uh, to try to uh, improve and uh, also to be more safe for the people because many people are riding on track and they push a lot. I a teacher with my son, yeah, in this uh, COVID-19. Yeah, I need to, to be the teacher of my son and uh, yeah, it was hard <laughs> because uh, yeah, every day, uh, like four or five hours working uh, with, and what's good also for me because many things you forget, <laughs> and especially the French things. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's good. <laughs> it looks like your son has a problem maybe with respect for his teacher here. But then yeah, this is well, honestly, it was the opposite. You didn't understand the picture. It was the opposite. It was the, the son that was teaching Mike some French words. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on here? Yeah, you know, you everybody was at home, and uh, yeah, we need to do something with uh, to cut hair because uh, if not, uh, we we'll look like crazy. <laughs> and yes, uh, my son want to uh, like uh, I cut everything. I said, oh, "Are you sure?" And after also, I did a game with uh, Freddy. I need to cut all my hair. Uh, yeah, it's trouble is I have uh, this winter. I did uh, my license for motorcycle, and I need uh, to have a picture. And uh, with this, on this one, I have like no air. <laughs> so very, very nice. Um, the final one, I think I, this is my favorite one. You, you were very successful by the looks of it as a gamer. There was, there was a photo I found where you were, you were definitely immersed in the world of the gamer. Which one? <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was nice as a motor race. The trouble is, uh, you know, when you have two children, you don't have time to play uh, PlayStation all the day. Uh, the evening when they are going to the bed, uh, you're tired and you go to bed. But uh, I think when they tell me that I can do the race, I try to train uh, all the night until three or four, but it was already too late. I need to train every day to, to be ready like the other guys. <laughs> um, Roberto, 
I think undoubtedly the most impressive thing that I've seen so far from lockdown, though, uh, was the way you have mastered the pit bike. We've got some footage now of you getting your knee down in the rain on a pit bike. This is incredible. You think so? <laughs> it's incredible, that maybe because uh, so during the during the period I cannot ride the the pit bike for sure because uh, everything was uh, was closed and uh, was uh, was impossible to do. But I teach a little bit from home uh, some uh, some people and I try to explain that uh, because someone asked me if it was possible to yes if it was possible to do a school during the day uh, with the rain condition and I say okay if there is a possibility when. Uh, everything will be open again we will do and in the this is uh, from the beginning of uh, june when i start again with the school and uh, i did the one afternoon training with uh, some uh, some people also and uh, did the video because uh, here is uh, with a slick tire doing exercise and training and uh, i say okay look it's possible to have a, a school day also with a slick tire on a pit bike because it's uh, it's uh, so nice to ride on the in wet condition with this uh, kind of bike and easy also <laughs> I like the way you sit. You you don't think it's that difficult. I've tried that a few times, and I make it look really really hard. <laughs> what what is nice is that uh, you, uh, the speed is not so much. Then uh, some sometimes many people uh, uh, don't think that uh, they they can have a good feeling also from uh, slow uh, slow speed. Uh, maybe in a parking like uh, that because this is uh, the paddock of. Uh, uh, track in, in Italy and uh, but it's a good train in any case because uh, this was to try to, to teach and explain that uh, every every condition is good to, to enjoy and to, to improve also the, the run style on a motorbike and it was very nice yes also training for the championship because it was uh, the start after the lockdown then this was good <laughs> well one of the I always find one of the most telling ways that you can find out about people on their social media especially during lockdown was to see what they got up to with their partners and wives and uh mike i found a very very revealing video about you <laughs> yeah my wife is uh, following some uh women that are playing and it's, she asked me ah we can do this okay let's try <laughs> and uh yeah after also freddie did it and josh with his wife yeah it was uh, was nice to you know you are at home and you need to find something to to, to enjoy and to to look like at the time more more slow more fast. <laughs> that was, I was, how many goes did that take? Was that the first try? <laughs> no, the second one. We try one time and I was uh, with no shirt. After I said, okay, we'll put a shirt and we'll make another video. But the first one was more uh, more easy. Second one, uh, you know, after one, it's, you start to be a little tired with the missile. <laughs> Okay, uh, Nicola, with you, I, I noticed you put up a really interesting photo. Um, is this your mum and dad? Show me, show me. Okay, <laughs> let, let me see if we can find this picture. There's, there, I, I found this one, and uh, it, it looked really familiar. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, this this uh, lockdown was looking never ending, and uh, and I was thinking that maybe we, we would come back to the racing uh, like with this look, you know. But luckily, uh, didn't take so long, and uh, we I, I still look quite young, so it's, it's not bad. I tell you what, if I look this good when I'm sixty, I would be so so happy. Uh, now. <laughs> Mike and Roberto, I have a question for you. I want to know if I'm the only person who thinks that Anek uh, looks remarkably like Charlie's Theron. I have a photo here that I think is that is that just me or do they look pretty similar? Yeah, similar. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, similar. I, tried, yeah. I tried before to call Charlie's Theron, but yeah. she said no, so I had to, to take this one. <laughs> you know. <laughs> 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 Roberto, plan B, plan B. okay, don't ever tell her neck that. Don't show her this. Picture. <laughs> uh, Roberto, I searched through your social media, and what started to show itself was that there are far. I think you have. Uh, is it your girlfriend or your wife? Uh, my girlfriend. Yes. Yeah, there are far more photos of your road bike than there are of your girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> This, I, think, I think you're more in love with your road bike than you are with your girlfriend. 
Like, I, these uh, are some of the photos we picked out. Yeah, also, uh, every day, every day cycling. This is true. And she is waiting for me a long time because <laughs> sometimes I can stay out uh, more than five, six hours. Then uh, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love both. She know. <laughs> she know I love cycling and uh, same as uh, I can love her. But <laughs> it is true. You see many, for sure, you saw many pictures of me on the bicycle because uh, I train every day. Then uh, I was lucky also because uh, sometimes during the lockdown in Switzerland was possible to go to go out cycling. Then uh, I always train and train alone for sure because it was not possible with more people, but was uh, was good. Yes. Ah, you saw that I was <laughs> many times cycling. Well, what I did like, though, was that you took the time while you were out riding sometimes to take some sexy photos to send back to your girlfriend. There's there's a fantastic mm -hmm. one here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Here is uh, when I am tired and uh, I stop. <laughs> I, here was a nice place in uh, Switzerland, Valverdasca, and uh, I was cycling and then I stopped for sure. This is true. Then I stopped, make the picture, <laughs> say, okay, I'm here. Why you don't come with the car, maybe, or with the cycling next time? <laughs> can, you, can you just show us, do you have the same shorts on today? Uh, what? Wait. The shorts, the shorts yeah. that you have. On. No, but look, not so different. <laughs> yeah. Looks good in any case. Eh? I like that. Yeah, this is, this is also, wait, where is, okay. This is nice also. Yeah. Look, <laughs> it's close. <laughs> I love this, you're, you're all business up top and then you're party down the bottom. Here is good because it's team shirt, but I am ready for the, the lake because it's not so far from here. <laughs> Please don't ask me to stand up, okay? <laughs> oh <dear. laughs> okay we're going to finish up gentlemen uh with a little game that tells us a little bit more about you guys uh the game's called two truths and a lie so uh you can uh you can do a lot of different uh you can you can talk about anything you want to talk about within your two truths and the the more random the truths then the easier it is to hide the lie, I find. So I can tell you one now. Uh, I'll give you my examples. I got my start in television because I was a child star in a British soap opera. Uh, I am the record holder for the distance you can jump on a bicycle into a lake. And uh, I've done a backflip on a motorbike. Which one is the lie? The third one. Which one do you reckon, Mike? The third one, a flip on a motorway. The one, the back flip on the bike. Nicola, what do you think? I say the second one, the, the longest. Uh... The longest leg jump? Two, the second one. It's yeah. number one. I was no. yeah. yeah. But the, the back flip on the motorbike was a tandem. Have you have you ever heard of Peter Pilat? The he's a Czech FMX rider. He he can do a tandem backflip. So you hold on, you put your hands under the bars, and you put your heels on his toes, and then he'll flip you. Scariest wow. thing I've ever done, hands down. It's horrific. <laughs> it's horrible. I don't recommend it. Okay, so yeah. you see how to play the game now. Uh, who wants to go first? Mike. Okay. Um, when I come in endurance, I won my three races in the row. Uh, when I come with Honda, I won my first race with them in endurance. And uh, I won my first race in uh, World Championship uh, 125 when I was 18. Okay. So three races with, in the first time you came in endurance, first race with Honda, or first race when you came in? One, two, five, World Championship. Yes. Roberto, Nicolo, how well yeah. do you know Mike? Which one's the lie? The, the problem, I, I was with him the first two races he did in endurance, but I don't remember if we won or not. And this is... <laughs> 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 this is good, eh? So yeah. You don't remember, nice. <laughs> I, think, I think he's number C. <laughs> number three? Number three, yes. Okay, yeah, the first race yeah, yeah. in one, two, five. Yeah. What do you think about yeah. that? 
Yeah, just repeat uh, number one and two. No, number one, it was uh, I won uh, yeah. two races in the row in endurance. Okay. Number two, yeah. I won my first race with Honda in endurance. Yeah. And number three, I uh, won my first race in 125 when I was 18. Uh, okay. Uh, I think the second one, you say? You don't remember me no. to the which motorbike, but no. Which one is it, Mike? It's uh, the last one. Uh, I won ah. when I was uh, 17, not 18, in Turkey. Okay, okay. one point for Nicolo, no points for Roberto. Uh, yeah. Nicolo, you're up <laughs> next. Well, I did one full season in the MotoGP, one full season in uh, World Super, and uh, one full season in one to five. <laughs> the other one, no. number three, yeah. <laughs> also number two because I haven't been super smart. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Okay, you've got one point each going into the third round, third and final round with Roberto. It's all square. It's all to play for, boys. See if you can yeah. fool him, Roberto. <laughs> so I am uh, twenty years uh, racing. Uh, I'm racing from since uh, nineteen ninety four, the first one. Uh, I am uh, um, endurance world championship rider, and uh, uh, what was. Uh, in endurance, I raced with the uh, Yamaka and the Suzuki. Okay. <laughs> so, a 20, uh, since 1994 racing? 26 years racing, yeah. Yeah, 26. This, this can be, yeah. Uh, and then second one was? I am uh, an endurance world championship, yeah. For, uh, and then the other yeah, one? Rider, Yamaha, yeah. And Suzuki rider. And in okay. this championship, I rode with the Yamaka and Suzuki. Hmm. The third one? Quite easy. Yeah, third one, I think. Yeah, um, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was easy. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it's a draw between Nicolo and Mike. Teammates from the GMT 94 days and now arch rivals on Honda and Yamaha. You, ha you share the spoils today. Um, yeah. All three of you, thank you so much for joining me and having thank so much too. fun. Thank, thank you. So you. Much. Well, what's coming up for each of you guys? What have you got planned now ahead of Le Mans? Now, I am, uh, I am still uh, training for, for the race because uh, I will have also some more uh, day of, uh, days of school uh, in Switzerland and in Italy during the month of August. Then in any case, when I do the school, I can train a little bit with a pit bike, as you saw in the, in the video, and uh, also with a normal bike. I have a, a R1 uh, that I use sometimes. Then August will be full of uh, concentration because I want to be good in uh, in Le Mans. In any case, then uh, no, no holidays at the moment for sure. And I will be here uh, at home, but I will uh, be in, uh, in France also next week because uh, I have a meeting with the team and we will have a small party together because it's a long time. I don't, I don't we don't have. Then it will be it will be nice. I will be in the uh, Press to the Moto Ein team for uh, a couple of days. Then we we will enjoy for sure. And after I go back home and waiting for the race. What about you, Nicola? I now I am in uh, in Spain because uh, I have two weeks of uh, I'm doing the coach for Yamaha World Superbike team, so I will be in Jerez this weekend and Portimao next one uh, to coach the the Yamaha guys, and uh, then uh, I will have some test with the Yacht just before uh, Le Mans 24 hours, and I'm really looking forward to, to be back on the Yacht bike and uh, to be back racing in the uh, in 24 hours race. This is, I'm really excited about it. I feel ready. I was training so much during the lockdown and uh, I think we can be very, very competitive. Okay, I look forward to seeing that. What about you, Mike? Yeah, I take uh, four days of holidays with my family and after uh, next week, I will be back uh, teaching and training uh, with um, MPS, it's some organization and Envie de Rouler, another one. And uh, yeah, after training every day uh, to be ready for Le Mans because we will be with a new uh, fire bell. And uh, yeah, we, we look forward because the bike is looking very strong and uh, happy to be there. Okay, before you leave us, can you show us where you're going to have your siesta after this? Siesta. <laughs> yeah, it's there. Hopla. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. Really? laughs> 
There we go. Gentlemen, thank you so, so much. Take care, and I look forward to seeing you in Le Mans. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.